Did you guys hear about what happened at the Capitol? Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. How was that funny? Well, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. They're proving their point in their own way. Come on, Brooke, lighten up. It was kind of funny. Whatever. What's gotten into you, Em? Since when did you start finding stuff like this funny? You're overanalyzing this. So, how are you liking the new school? It's a big adjustment, but we're getting by. It sucks. So, are we going to this BLM protest or what? Why do we seem so forced to go? We're going because we care, not like it's an obligation. Hey, Chad, are you going to the BLM protest later today? I don't know, man. What the cops are doing is right. No one can convince me otherwise. Are you kidding me right now? Katie, wait for me. Seriously, Chad? You don't know how hard it must be for them since they just moved to an all-white school. Whatever, Emily. Brooke, I don't know how much longer I can be friends with Emily. Katie, be serious right now. She is the only person in school who bothered to make us feel welcome. And we just moved to this neighborhood. We need to have someone you know in that school or else the last two years of high school will be a living hell and you know it. I get it, I guess. Without her, we would just be stared down by the entire school. So I guess we'll just have to fight through it. And that's what I like to hear. Now let's go get ready for the protest. Hey, what's up? Why are you guys so quiet? It's just that You've been acting a little different lately. What's that supposed to mean? No, it's just... Katie, okay, let's, let's not do this right now. Oh, oh, so you guys are talking about me? You guys should be glad that you have me as your friend because you don't know half the things people say about your kind here. Your kind? What are we? Some different type of different species to you? I mean, what did you expect coming into this school? You're so full of yourself, Emily. You know what? I can't do this anymore. The only reason I'm friends with you is because Chad, Rebecca, Megan, and I made a bet for $20 to see how long I could stay friends with people like you. So you were just using us for a $20 bill? Is that all we are to you? A piece of paper? I knew you were suspicious, but I didn't think you would stoop that low. I couldn't give a damn how you feel right now. I just lost $20 and wasted my time hanging out with you freaks. Go rot in hell, Emily. I can't believe she said that. Should we go to Principal Ram? We can try, but what are we supposed to say? Let's just go see what happens. Fine. What can I do for you, ladies? Yeah, we want to talk to you about a problem we're having with some of the students here. All right, what's the problem you're having? Some students have been acting just super racist towards us. What are these students' names? Emily Williams, Chad Johnson, and some other students we don't know. Let me call her up to settle this problem. Emily Williams? Oh, great. Good to see you, Emily. Um, I've heard that you and these two girls have been having some problems, so you've been treating them lately. Uh, can you explain to me what exactly happened? Me and my friends just made a silly bet. We didn't mean to use them. Use them? I mean, I didn't mean to. They made a bet for $20 to see how long she could stay friends with our kind. You know you meant everything you said. It wasn't that serious. You were saying we were worth a piece of paper. It is serious. Right. I've heard enough. Brooke and Katie, can you wait outside the office while I talk to Emily in private? Is what Brooke and Katie saying true? <sighs> Emily, lying at this point won't change anything. I'll still be able to find out what happened. My friends and I made a little bet to see how long I could stay friends with them because they're not like us, but it was just a joke. I wasn't trying to cause problems. <sighs> you know, I don't take these things lightly. They're no different than anyone else in the school. Even if it's a predominantly all white school, I will not tolerate this behavior. 
you know better than to treat someone differently because of the color of their skin. This isn't grade school. Not only have you offended those two girls, but you've offended me as well. A lot of you kids say things without realizing how insensitive you are towards others. Brooke and Katie are new to this school. You're supposed to make them feel like, and well, you're supposed to make them feel welcome. Don't make them feel like outcasts. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make Brooke and Katie feel that way. You shouldn't be apologizing to me. You should be apologizing to Brooke and Katie. So when I call them back in here, I want you to genuinely apologize, okay? Brooke and Katie? Sorry for the wait, girls. Emily, do you have something to say to them? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Yeah, I, it's okay, I guess. Thank you for apologizing. All right. That's all. Brooke and Katie, you're dismissed. You can go back to class. Emily, I will be contacting your parents later today so we can further discuss your punishment. Hey, I heard what happened. Are you guys okay? What they did was so messed up. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> we're fine. We were just wondering if you wanted to sit with us at lunch later today. Oh, sure. Thank you. Was she actually really nice to us? I think so. This is Allie. She is 16 years old and loves to watch movies. Allie is not always happy about her personality and isn't comfortable in her body because of her family. Her mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Rogers, always compare her to other siblings and negatively reinforces her beliefs that she's not as perfect as everyone else in her family. Her family expects her to have a perfect body, perfect grades, but without the perfect circumstance. Her other siblings are Alexa and Anthony, that, and they are seven years old. Their favorite pastimes are bothering Allie and making her look very bad. In this household, being competitive for the title of best child means a lot to the kids. You know, I tried. Not everyone could be a gym rat and represent the, the pinnacle of human fitness. I tried to develop in a good morning regimen and try to eat right, but there's only so much I could put on my plate. But it, it helps, it doesn't help when you always have this re negative reinforcement hovering over your shoulders and keeping you down. Sometimes I just want to ball up and cry. My family is a constant reminder of the... Hey, dork face. Mom said to come downstairs. Dinner's ready. Yeah. Wiping her, wiping her tears on the sleeve of her jacket, hiding her face from her sister's view. Yeah, I'll be down in a minute. Allie continues to wipe her tears after crying. Then she heads downstairs for dinner. The Rogers family all takes their seats at the dinner table, except for Mr. Rogers, who seems to be on a very important phone call in the other room. While the family waits for Mr. Rogers to enter, Allie tries to strike up a conversation, speaking sheepishly. Hey, um, Mom, I have something to tell you. Allie plays with her jacket strings nervously. Mrs. Rogers glances up with her brows furrowed. Hey, Mom, take a look at what I did at school today. Alexa that's, shows a picture of her artwork. That's great, honey. But before Allie says anything, let me tell you about the phone call I got from her school earlier today. Allie sits back nervously and confused in her chair, oblivious to, the call, to who the call was from and its purpose. Enter Mr. Rogers, who just got off the phone with his boss. Ooh, she's in he's in trouble. trouble. <laughs> Why did I get a phone call from Mr. Huckleberry saying that you were dozing off in class? You were dozing off in class today? You know better than to do that. You've got a future to work towards. Colleges don't like kids like you. It's not what you guys think. Um, recently, I just... Mrs. I... Rogers interrupts Allie as she scoots further, pressing her finger on the table. With with the excuses, you don't do anything but sit on your lazy ass and chow down on enough food to feed a whole soup kitchen. Maybe if you stopped stuffing your face and started focusing on your schoolwork, you'd be well enough rested to not be a disappointment. Allie looks down in her chair in sadness as her mother, Mrs. Rogers, continues to insult her shaking his head in disapproval. I'm extremely disappointed in you, young lady. 
we've been working our hardest to support this family. And this is the best you can do with what we give you. This behavior is completely unacceptable. And another thing, when are you going to start working on your parents? How do you expect to get a decent job looking like that? Allie begins to cry while Lex and Anthony start throwing food, start teasing each other. Allie has never been the perfect daughter her family wanted, but she finally said something about it. Um, wait, wait. <clears throat> With her head still looking down, hot tears began rolling down Allie's cheeks. Without taking a breath, she snaps. How am I supposed to focus in school when every single time I get home, I get berated with insults? All you guys just tell me is what a horrible and ugly daughter I am. And no matter how hard I live up to your expectations, they're never good enough for you. And the reason why I was sleeping in class is because I stay up all night working on homework. You know how hard it is to take advantage of classes? They're very difficult and the work piles up. You would only understand that if you take the time to listen to me for once. I'm not the perfect daughter you guys expect me to be, but how could I when nothing I do satisfies you? Mr. Rogers slams down his hands on the dinner table, absolutely appalled. Go to your room right now, girl. I'm sick of your disrespect. This is not who we raised you to be. Fine, and this it's is whatever. the last straw. Allie stands up from the dinner table. Her mother sits quiet in a disappointed stare and her siblings snicker at her. Fine, it's all I ever do anyway. Allie storms away from the table, leaving her unfinished plate and her teasing twin siblings behind. She quickly runs up the staircase and to her bedroom door, slamming it shut as she enters. Hey kids, uh, what do you think about going to get some ice cream? Yeah. And scene. Calm, calm down, calm down. Everything's gonna be alright. Okay, look, 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 look. Everything's gonna be alright. What if I can do? What if I can do? With this rent, no one really believes me, so why should I try for them to make me believe me right now? No one really cares, and they're really gonna care when I'm gone, and it's gonna make everyone's life easier. And plus, this could end. All the pain and sadness and anger. No one really cares. So, so maybe I should be make everything easier for them and for me. Well, my dad. I guess he does care. I don't want him to think it's his fault. That he can do anything to stop me, but I just can't take him on, no matter how hard I try. I just, I can't. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know what to do anymore. I just can't take it anymore. No matter how hard I try, I just can't. I can't. I just don't. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know how to stop this. And I don't think it'll ever stop. No matter how hard I try. I just... I wish I, wish I had people sitting beside me telling me everything's gonna be alright. It doesn't matter if they don't believe in I just wish they were here. I just wish my mom was here helping me. Or my dad. I can't, I can't. Just... I come up. I don't know, maybe this is the solution to this, right? I mean, it will, right? It will, it will end everything. 
which makes my my life easier than putting theirs. I just I just It's just gonna help everyone, including yourself. So you said you'll try everything that can help you. So let's just let's do it, right? Hello, honey. I know I should have called earlier, but it got really loud over here at work. And if I called, you wouldn't be able to hear me, so... But anyways, I just wanted to come on here and say that I won't be able to make it home tonight. I know, I know. I'm so sorry, Eloise. But you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? But look, just know I love you and that I always will, okay? I'm trying my best to figure this out with you. And I gotta admit, it is not easy. But just know I'm going to be there every step of the way, whether it takes time. I am so proud of you, and I'm so sorry you have to be struggling with something like this at such a young age. And I wish there was more. There was more I can do than just sit here, wait and hold your hand. But it is life. Think of it like you're a glow stick and you have to break before you go. Am I right? But I am promising that it will be all right, better than all right. You're going to start seeing the happier version of yourself, the brighter you, okay? Well, I won't keep you here for too long. I have to get back to work, but just know I love you so much and have a good night, sweetheart. Bye. I'm dead. You probably won't see this till like tomorrow morning, but I just want to let you know. I really do love you. I know I don't say it enough, but I really do, and and I really do appreciate everything you do for me. And I know that I know that it's been rough for you and me, but just know, just know, everything's gonna be all right. And I almost did something really stupid that would have made you lose your mind, and probably mom's too, but. When I heard that you messaged me, I stopped. And I just want to let you know, thank you. <laughs> and not just for saving my life now, but for everything. And I really, I really do wish this was gone. I just don't want it to overpower me. I just want it gone. But, but that's all I wanted to say. And I just love you, I really do. Bye. Thank you. I don't know about this. Like, what if I don't fit the role or worse, I, I croak? Amelia, you'll be fine. Your voice is amazing. The audition song fits the role and your voice. Believe me, you'll do well, and I'll be there cheering you on. Juniper, look at all the people here practicing and warming up, like the residential senior heartthrob Ellie and Mike, who, mind you, is, is an excellent dancer. I stand no chance. Come on, Amelia, just do what you do best. Trust me. Okay, but I really have to impress the director and the president to give me this role. Um, so how was that? That was acceptable. I think you did a fantastic job, really. 
I just suggest that while you perform to move a little bit more while you sing so you don't look like a stiff. I'm sorry, Amelia, though your performance was very breathtaking. Your look was very um, unique. You're just not what we're looking for appearance-wise. Um, excuse me, may I say something? Go ahead. I don't understand how I don't look the part. Isn't that what costumes and makeup are for? Yes, but um, you're just, you just, yes, but you're just not a good fit appearance wise. You know, it has to be like believable to the audience. Wait, who's that? Um, you who just entered, how would you like to play the role of Rizzo in our school musical Grease? Um, I'm only here to support my friend Amelia and also, I really can't sing. And Amelia's a really good singer. She is, but sadly we had... They turned her down. That doesn't make any sense. You turned on someone who auditioned the role and you come in and just try and give me the role. Um, sadly, and what our vice president just stated, Amelia is an amazing singer, but her appearance is just not Rizzo. Amelia, we should go. Amelia, don't let what they say bother you. They're not even in charge of the musical. They're only seniors who will hopefully learn their lesson. Yeah, also, thanks, Juniper. You're a good friend. Hello. What's up? Okay, I guess I'll start. What's your name, kid? Yeah. Um, it's Lee. What's yours? I'll let you guess. Um, is it Casey? That's a good guess. Thanks, but it says it on the side of your screen. Oh yeah, what else does it say? It says we should get started on this project. But seriously, you don't know who I am? Why would I? You YouTuber or something? <laughs> nah, everyone knows me because my dad's. George Floyd? Yeah, how'd you say you didn't know who I was? I don't, but I know him. So what else do you know? Uh, I know that you probably think you're... Handsome? A celebrity. Oh, oh. so you don't think I'm handsome? <laughs> Let's get to work. Oh, no, I forgot to add London. She's supposed to be helping me with this project. Maybe she'll think I'm handsome. Very funny. I'm going to add her now. Hey, what's up? Hey, London. This is Lee. Lee, this is my obnoxious best friend, London. Hey, London. Well, I see you've met the new celebrity. Chill. Let's just get started with this project. What? Isn't his dad dead? So you thought that was funny? Why would you say something like that? What? I didn't realize he'd be so sensitive about it. Of course he's sensitive. It's his dad. Well, since you care so much, why don't you go check up on your new boyfriend? You know, I can't stand you sometimes. Hey, Lee, are you okay? Why'd you leave? Do you care? Of course I do. It's okay, you can talk to me. You know, my dad always told me, once you open your mouth, 
let the world know who you are. I'm not sure if the world's opinion matters anymore. The world advertised my father's death, forcing me to relive his death over and over again. Instead of celebrating his life, we honor his death. They say they care, yet they find a way to make me suffer. So you was just another reason to be angry but to me. That's my... It's hard to get over something when you can't get past it, when the world won't let you get past it. Yeah. I know you wouldn't understand. Ladies, gentlemen, about any volunteers or about to start calling names? Uh, can I go, Mr. J? I guess. Who else is in your group? Me, London, and Lee. Whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Jackelheimer. Hey, watch it. Society tells us who we're supposed to be, rather than giving us the strength to be something better. The best question I can think of that will challenge your mind is, who are we? I'll tell you who we are. We're young, we're dumb, we're impatient, we're scared, we're reckless, we are hurt. We are hopeful, we are learning, we are alive. We're there for each other. Who we are isn't that question, but what we can be is. It's up to us to change the world. Many individuals lost their lives for being who they are, but they're not lost and neither are we. We're Brianna Taylor. We are Trayvon Martin. We are Stephen Clark, Alton Sterling, Freddie Gray, Janice Fonville. We are, we are George Floyd. These people, along with many more, live through us. We will not forget them. Instead, we'll embrace them and cherish them, giving their death meaning. So now I ask you, who are you? <laughs>